look versus time. I'm gonna get in so much trouble for this video, but it's the one that you guys ask for most of all. And if I sum this up in probably just one sentence, this is probably the engineer versus the artisan. But I'm gonna go through it and give you guys a little bit more detail on that because these two are without doubt the two most prestigious brands on the cycling market at the moment. And a brand that a lot of people to aspire to own at some point. But we get asked in the comments all the time, which one do you choose? And it's really, really difficult because they've got their own little nuances. Now, I'm gonna start with the easy option because this is the race bike, and this is the easier place to start from. So right now, Time have the Alpe d'Huez, which is their race bike. Now this is a very, very classic race bike. 73 degrees, 73 degrees, 28 millimeter tire clearance. This is a general all round, all purpose race bike, whereas Look, I've got the 795, which is all sleek and all aero and a steeper seat angle as well. So you can't really compare these two. Really, you should be comparing this to the Skylon, but Time haven't really updated the Skylon for a quite a long time. So I haven't really included it into this review until they bring out their new model. Um, then when it comes on to endurance bikes, this is probably another video again, because Look, obviously have the 765, the Optimum, which is long and slack, um, what I consider a proper endurance bike for big, long days out in all sorts of weather and road conditions. Whereas Time have the ADH-X, that all-road strike gravel, which is still traditional angled, but with additional tire clearance. So this relates more to things like the Cervelo Caledonia, where this is more comparable to something like the BMC road machine. So can't really compare. And then when you come into the gravel ranges, time often you have the ADHX 45, an all out performance, steep angled, you know, gravel racing machine. And look, obviously have the 765 gravel, which is again, long slack, wide tire clearance. So completely different design philosophy. When we really delve into the details um, after that, once you've decided whether either one of these brands actually do offer the bike that you need, then we can start looking at those fine details. Now, Time is obviously really, really famous for that resin transfer molding and the ride quality is really, really sets Time apart because they weave their own carbon. Unlike nearly every other brand on the market, these guys take strands of Dyneema, Carbon and Kevlar, weave them together like a sock, wrap them around a solid wax mandrel and then put it into a mold and then inject that resin in. So you're almost like bleeding a set of brakes. And this makes for a really sturdy stiff frame but it doesn't come with that vibrating ride quality that you'd normally associate with a bike that stiff the ride quality is absolutely superb and they've also got those little details that just sort of show you that this is handcrafted like you can see the 4k weave on the top here it just has some slight imperfections where you can see that resin has been flowing through it the design aesthetic of them is all quite engineered so they all have these straight sides here on the head tube how the dropouts are all engineered is all very much like how a more scientific engineering brain might design them whereas when you come to things like the look these guys always do things a little bit different this is more like uh, the Aston Martin if you like the the lines are so much more flowing they integrate things a little bit cleaner they design all the little fine details all their headset caps are the same all the stems are integrated the design details on the 795 is absolutely insane. And this is what really sets look apart from almost any other brand in the market is just the attention to detail they put into the integration, which is incredible. Whereas Time on the ha other hand, are still using off the market products. They're still using stuff from Data, for example, to get their headsets and that sort of thing all set up. So slightly different design philosophies. These guys put it all into the materials, the frame, and then outsource some other aspects. Whereas look really do take a command of almost every single aspect um, and really want every single detail to be owned by them. That's not to say that the carbon layup on a look frame is poor uh, in comparison. It's just very different. They're using much more common pre-preg layups like you would find on nearly every other carbon bike frame on the market. It really is time's unique process. But they have to say it's very, very good. The inside of the frame is always very clean and the ride quality is exceptional compared to a lot of other things on the market. But you cannot compare the ride quality of a look, a Pinarello, anything to the ride quality of a time. That is the one fundamental thing that sticks time above everything else is just the pure ride quality. Now, when it comes to the overall aesthetic, I think you have to admit that 
look have got the color scheme and the matching stuff absolutely nailed. Their association with Pierre Mondrian and those look colors and how they do their entire color ranges is definitely a step apart. Now, time, typical engineers go and find the best quality paints and do a fantastic paint job, but they haven't quite got that artistic uh, edge, I think, that look have. The clear lacquer on the find on the ADHX, if you have that engineering type brain, you're gonna love almost seeing the insides of your frame because you can see where the joins are and how it's all been finished. And this is like, almost like looking inside the frame. It's absolutely beautiful. And then things like this, which are the racing bike, lots of logos. It's a very classic design. It's only really their new ADHX 45, where they're starting to get a little bit more creative by introducing these vertical fades, uh, which I have to say looks fantastic. Right, let's take a more detailed look at these frames, and nobody makes a frame quite like Time do. In fact, down here, it talks about their blend, about that bio-based Dyneema. I think that's what makes these frames something akin to witchcraft, because when you have them in your hand, they feel super stiff, super robust. Even the forks, it's like, it feels hardly any flex in there at all. And when you see them like this, you expect them to ride really harsh as well, but they don't, they ride beautifully smoothly. They're also fantastic at their finishing. It's something they really do put a lot of pride into. So all the flat surfaces where your mech mount will be is all nice and flat. The surfaces around here where all these um, plastic components is are all lovely and flat. Their brake mounts are normally fantastic. However, I have had a couple where I've had to remove a little bit of lacquer from here, but they're normally beautifully well finished. Now, another thing that they do, they tend to only spec really high quality parts. So these little rib nuts here are normally really nice high quality rib nuts, but they are essentially just a rib nut placed in after the frame has been constructed. So not quite as good as we'll see from look in a second. When it comes to the bottom bracket, all time bikes right now use the BB386 Evo, which is a 46 millimeter hole, 86 and a half millimeters wide, and they're always beautifully well finished. In fact, so well finished that it catches out a few mechanics because they're normally exactly 46 millimeters, like give or take like two microns maybe, if that. And sometimes we have that problem where we actually need to measure the actual bottom bracket pushing into it because they can be a little bit undersized. So something that people do pick up on these when they first see them, especially if a bike shop's not used to it because of that resin transfer mold and everything wrapped around wax is these are parts of a frame that are pushed together and bonded in so on the inside you can see where the end of this section here has been pressed into this little junction so you can sometimes see this little rough finish on the inside perhaps where the end of this section which has been laid on that wax mandrel you can just see some loose fibers in there most of the time they've removed but every now and then you can see something okay let's take a look at a look frame now the probably the one thing that sets them apart is whereas time tend to use standardized components right now they're using the Dadia DCR system 27.2 seat post look on the other hand are famous for having lots and lots of proprietary parts all meticulously made and slotted together and it come with a massive instruction manual it's really all about the integration and the finishing touches with look so um, a good example, handlebars that we've shown you before. The frames on look are always beautifully finished. They always have that extra little care and attention at the end of their build process. Um, it's always worth checking though. I think it's always worth checking every single bike, but you can look down these and have a really good look around and it's always beautifully finished. Like someone's, you can just tell that someone spent some time on it. Not that like it's come out of the mold perfect, but you can tell that someone in the factory has gone through and checked and double checked and and sanded and just prepared, which is absolutely beautiful. What you do get with Look is normally a big, big pile of parts. This is probably what sets them apart. Things like they have their own bungs, which will use a uh, steel bolt so that you can use magnets to attach the top plate. They have their own compression rings so that the cable routing works well and the spaces stay in place by little location holes. They have their own top cap assemblies that all fit together beautifully. So you kind of get this extra level of integration. They tend to use quite a lot of their own rubber bungs and placements to help you cover up holes. And I think with nearly every single look bike, there'll be an instruction manual similar to this where it tells you exactly how you should be mounting the cables, exactly the torque settings to be used for every single situation. And it's all very specific. You kind of have to get this right because everything's been designed to work in a certain way. When it comes to the actual construction of the frame, even though they're using some lovely carbon fibre techniques and they claim to be using lots of different modulus of carbon fibre, they still use pretty much the same production process as every carbon manufacturer does by using that pre-preg layup. The thing that really sets them apart is really their attention to detail in the finishing, the things that really 
complete the bike's look. And of course, that little extra attention to detail on the finishing that a lot of brands, as we know, aren't doing. We've covered this frame, particularly in length on the channel with a whole ride review and a first look we've really showed you in fine detail. So if you're interested, go and check out one of those videos. We'll put the links around. We won't labor the point and repeat ourselves here. So how would you choose between the two if you had to? Well, after you've gone down that route of is this bike suitable for me in terms of its application? There's only a couple of crossovers where that might come into conflict. For instance, the Time ADH is very, very similar to the Look 785, which we don't have here, and a new one is rumored to be on its way. They're the only two models that really compare very closely. The Skylon will obviously compete with this when they launch it, news on that sometime, hopefully soon, and the Fluidity might. And that, when all of the ranges are set out, that's when you might have the most problem choosing between the two. As a general rule, I normally find that the looks come up a little bit lighter, but the ride quality is much better on the time. The attention to detail, the paintwork, the artwork on the look definitely exceeds that of the time. But then if you really appreciate that, um, being able to see and experience how your bike was constructed and crafted, time definitely wins in that area. So it's gonna be a tough decision. The one thing that these two brands do have in common is their attention to quality. Like when we unpack these, it's very, very rare, not impossible, but it's very rare that we find things like brake mounts are wrong or bottom brackets are wrong. Headsets are normally nicely finished. And the customer service from both of these brands is exceptional. We've got direct links with both of them now and they really are a team full of really passionate people who really want to help. And it's been an absolute pleasure working with both of these brands. There we go, I hope you've enjoyed that little attempt of a comparison between time versus look. Ultimately, it comes down to, I think, whether your individual personality is slightly swayed towards the engineered or the slightly artisan, but essentially they're both fantastic bikes and anyone would be proud to own anything that you can see in front of you here. We're very, very privileged to be able to represent both these brands. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Get down in the comments, share your experiences, add to the debate. I think this is gonna be a fairly hot topic and we'll see you on the next one.